Hello and welcome to Attachment Builders for Christ. My name is Will Sturgis and today we'll be talking about sound doctrine. When we talk about sound doctrine, when we mention sound doctrine, what exactly are we referring to? Uh, when we talk about sound doctrine, we're talking about basically sound teachings or wholesome teachings or learnings. Um, if you don't get it right the first time, you're more than likely going to get it wrong. Amen. Anybody else? I would just add that it's sound because it's founded on the scripture. It's rooted in the scripture. Uh, we can look to the scripture and, and see if it's something that's true or false. It's something that um, doesn't contradict in other areas of the word of God. Amen. Amen. And last week, um, as most of you know, we spent the entire week talking about sound doctrine, writing different blogs and different discussions for sound doctrine. But when it comes to sound doctrine, there's just uh, not enough emphasis that you can put on it because you need more time to expand on what you may have uh, have said or wanted to say also. Um, why is sound doctrine so important? I think when you look at even the New Testament, you look at um, Paul's conversion and then uh, the works that happen after. Uh, when you look at the letters that he wrote to the churches of Asia Minor, uh, a lot of it was spent on, or a good portion of it was spent on, uh, getting sound doctrine or getting the, the identity and the person of Christ in right perspective because uh, he was contending against a lot of false teachers. He was contending a lot against uh, the Judaizers. He was contending against uh, people who would take the name of Christ but throw something different into the mix. Mm. Uh, so you had a lot, like you had a lot going on and up even, even dealing with uh, the churches that he was writing to that he planted he also had to uh, warn them against the false the false gods that they were praying to before uh, they came to know the salvation knowledge of Christ so uh, his warning was like it covered a lot of areas and so sound doctrine you have to get it right or like I said before you'll always get it wrong absolutely I agree I would say it's important because it's the difference between doxology and idolatry Mm. Because mm. you got mm. your Good. theology and what you know about God, right? And if it's wrong, you're supposed to worship God in spirit and truth. So who are you worshiping if, you're, if your theology is wrong or right? if the doctrine, your view of this doctrine is wrong, but you're worshiping God in light of what you understand it to mean, you're not rightfully worshiping God. So um, I think that can, that can lead to a lot of... A lot of bad things. You was listening yeah. to Shy Line. No, <laughs> the shy line. Yeah. tell you too. <laughs> and that's an excellent example. And um, it's funny you say that because uh, years ago, years ago, we were at a church in um, in Baltimore, a big church, well-known bishop, and he was preaching, and he made the comment. He said, "Last week I said something that wasn't biblically correct." He said, it "Was brought to my attention." He said, "I wanted to apologize for it." He said, um, for those that know what I'm talking about, um, return your CDs, and I want to correct that. And um, I thought that that was amazing that he did that. Mm -hmm. You know, because so many people um, take the scripture and they may interpret it their own way, as you said. And um, they intentionally mislead people, but once it was brought to his attention that he made a mistake, he stood up and said, look, I made a mistake. This wasn't right. I need everything that went out referring to this mistake to come back so I can make the correction. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was powerful. Right. And I said, that's an example of a good teacher. Mm -hmm. And that's not something that we would consider um, false doctrine because he made a mistake. And that's the thing I want to get into next. How do we separate someone that actually makes a mistake versus somebody that's intentionally misleading people? Um, so let's talk about false teachers versus false doc I mean, uh, false doctrine. I think you made a good example because the the fruit of the spirit that's working in him is that he had a repentant heart, mm -hmm. and that he told the congregation and who he's preaching to, and he understands that God has given charge over them uh, to him that his blood, you know, that their blood is on his hands in a lot of respects, mm -hmm. and he was making sure that his the people that he has has charge over. Um, we're not going to be led astray by even anything that he would say mm -hmm. uh, and to go back and correct that I mean that's that takes a lot of humility mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, a, a lot like I said a lot of humility and being sensitive to the spirit because you have a, a lot of preachers unfortunately 
cool to be like, well, I, what I swear I said, that's the Lord's word and all that <laughs> other stuff. And, and yeah, you hear yeah. about stories about that. And so, um, it, like I said, it just leads to more ungodliness, I mean, in a lot of respects. And so we're even, I could even say that even in our walk with Christ, I mean, our, our in a sense, our, doc, our doctrine about Christ gets sharpened over time. I mean, there's things that I probably would not teach ever again. I would say even seven to eight years ago that I'm teaching now right. just because I've gotten a new understanding of it and gotten a better depth of the scriptures. So. Amen. Yeah. Um, I don't think we're going to find a church where there's perfect doctrine. Mm -hmm. Like there's error everywhere. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be false teaching if it's not true, right? Mm -hmm. We would rather call it error, but where we have the difference between a false teaching and a false teacher is the fact that they getting it wrong on orthodox issues you know what i mean yeah. like things that are salvific you know what i mean and that's where we would separate the two um, as far as just error in the minors versus error in the majors mm -hmm. that would make the difference between a false teacher and false teaching absolutely but we're seeing more of a trend where um, teachers are being raised up, where the doctrine, the doctrine is very misleading, if it, to say it nicely, very misleading, and people are flocking to it. Why is that? The heart. Yeah, the heart. <laughs> yeah oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, was, I, I was gonna say, um, <laughs> the great part about this age mm -hmm. is that we can grasp information just by turning this thing on. The bad thing about this age is we can just turn this thing on. Absolutely. <laughs> and so we have to ask, we got to ask in prayer. It's got to be dipped in prayer. Uh, and also fasting is something that we really got away. I said as a church, I think we've really gotten away from it. I'll even say it for myself. I need to do more of um, that. We ask God to filter uh, our minds and also filter our hearts when we look at the word, uh, because then. You know, he's the true interpreter of scripture, even though he's given us a, a, a plethora of resources to go through, whether it be a strong concordance, whether it be commentaries, whether it be other books that, uh, of other resources. But we really uh, need to be really studiers of the word uh, to get to get to the meat of it. Will we get it perfect all the time? Absolutely not. But that comes with the practice of our faith. Absolutely. Yeah. I think when you talk about one of the big reasons why it's, it's such this big trend now of this... Um, the false teaching is where you have the pastors that want to draw people into the church but it's not it's no longer about saving lives it has become more about the popularity of I have this many members or I have this many people targeted. here yeah versus um, I can have five people that give their life to Christ and I'm and that offer sound doctrine versus I have 25 people that are just here <laughs> yeah and it's becoming you know a popularity thing it looks good on camera it does absolutely <laughs> I think it's Postmodernism has a lot to do with it. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. the fact that we don't want to, we want to be super sensitive and want to, don't want to say anybody's wrong. <clears throat> so you have some seeker, um, what do you call them? Seeker friendly churches who they literally go around the neighborhoods and knock on your door. Um, do you go to church? No, why not? This is the reason why. Would you go to church if church had this? What kind of music do you like? Do you like rock music? Do you like contemporary? Would you go to church if they had rock music or contemporary? Mm -hmm. What kind of messages do you like? Short or long ones? So yeah. they literally design. <laughs> it's not design. Right. Yeah, they yeah, take a survey. survey and they design the format and flow of the church service based on what carnal people want. Right. So then, when you're in the church and it comes time to preaching the gospel, guess what? We can't make these people offended because we designed a service that mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And, and, that, and it becomes idolatry in a lot of times. We become, exactly. like I said, we become seeker friendly in a lot of respects. I want to read this verse, and it actually um, follows up very well to what you just said. It's the Second Timothy, chapter four, verses three and four. Mm -hmm. It said, "For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but have itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, and will turn away from listening to the truth, and wander off into myths." As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of evangelists, fulfill your ministry. So right then and there, it says that everybody doesn't want sound doctrine. People aren't looking for something to hold them accountable. Right. They're looking for something to make them comfortable. Right. Absolutely. 
That's corny. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just got a text message, like, this morning. Right. A friend of mine invited us to a, invited me to a men's conference. It was a men's conference about, like, learning how to repent, learning how to, like, pursue God apart from my heart's desires and surrender and, you know, get to know and grow closer to God, you know. It was about how I'm going to get my blessing. Oh, like, it really? was like how you maximize and sustain your blessing. And it was, like, crazy me-centered, and it didn't seem too focused on God apart from what he was going to give me. Mm. <clears throat> so, wow. that's, I mean, who wouldn't go to that? And even went to the extent of talking about whatever your pursuit is in life, as far as what you see as successful, what you're into business-wise, how to maximize that potential. Um, nothing about anything that has to do with, you know, your spiritual status. Mm. So. One of the major things that I love about our ministry, our Passion for Christ, um, Passion Builders for Christ ministry, is that we can attack certain topics that others will stay away from. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're, we're not dependent on numbers. We're, we we want to focus on the truth. So, um, with that being said, I have a very uh, sensitive question that a lot of people take offense to, but we need to discuss it. Should you call out false teachers? Yes. Should you Absolutely. identify false yes. teachers? Absolutely. Absolutely. Why? Because it's, oh, go ahead. No, no, you got it. You got it. This, this is your lane, bro. <laughs> this is your lane. This is your lane. <laughs> I mean, if you care, like we're called to love, right? We're called to love people, we're called to share the gospel, mm -hmm. we're called to um, to do these things. And if we see somebody, right, leading somebody in the wrong direction, it's not like we're just going to go to that person, but we care about everybody else that that person comes into contact with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference if you know the person? Absolutely. And some people will say, well, you should have went to them first, even though I forget the, the scripture, but the context is if that's somebody that we're in the same local church then we go to that person then right. we go to the mm -hmm. pastor then we bring mm -hmm. it before yep. the church right. but if it's somebody on the internet if mm -hmm. it's somebody in another city but we know they have access to a lot of heirs right then if you really care for the well-being of people who might be led astray then you open your mouth and say something mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. a friend of mine they didn't like it but i'm like if if you grow up um if if, if you're a parent and you're raising your child and you're telling them about a wolf and you're like, they got teeth like this, and their eyes look like this, right. and they got nails, and the wool look like this. You want to stay away from them, right? Um, but if you see a wolf, aren't you going to say, look, that's a wolf? <laughs> you know, it just, yeah. it just yeah. seems like it's just the logical conclusion right. that you come mm -hmm. to. Exist. I mean, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's honest. It's so funny because remember the conversation uh, we had about a particular artist? Um, and we talked about the album, and, and there was one song in particular that you took issue oh, yeah. with. Yeah. I was uh, down at a church in, in North Carolina, and the guy was saying kind of, he was basically saying the same thing uh, you were, and he knew him personally, knew, knew that artist personally, and actually got on him of like, yo, this is yeah, this is yeah. an issue. And so I, I kind of laughed when I heard that. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know we had that discussion and, and kind of hashed out some of those things. But it was interesting that it, you know that came out kind of in the same vein as you were, and I just laughed. I said, "Yep," yeah. I said, "That sounds just like Easy." <laughs> but like I said, he, in a lot of respects, and I can understand his point. Um, I can understand his point. It was somebody that he went right to because he had close proximity to, and um, that's what that's what we're supposed to do in the faith. Like I said, if he's if it's somebody that's close proximity, you know, have the have the courage to go up to him and say and with tact I mean mm -hmm. you know, some people mm -hmm. just can Absolutely. be you know that unfortunately that some people just don't have that in them you know you you ask for the spirit of gentleness in a lot of respects but some people don't have it um, but you still want to go to that person and say hey you know this is this is I'm having issue with it and but also bring the scriptures with you amen yes. don't amen. just say hey this this just doesn't sound right look I need to bring you this is what it's looking like but what you're saying is contrary to that and at least say that and put it out there and say, you know, what's your, in a sense, what is your response to that? Or why did you teach that? Or why did you say that? Um, at least, at least have that dialogue versus, so you're just wrong. And I just, you just, man, you're full of the devil and everything else in between. Yeah. You know, folks just get nutty and just, you know, they, they, they rather, they just rather demean somebody than actually 
take the time to actually build the relationship right. or even salvage the relationship in a lot of respects. Amen. Absolutely. So for our viewers, what are some key points that we can focus in on when it comes to looking out for sound doctrine? How to recognize sound doctrine? I think number one is going to, per is going to point to the person and the work of Christ. Uh, number one, you're going to see spiritual fruit. Two, it's going to give you convictions uh, about where we, where you are personally in your walk with God, and uh, it's going to make you reflect uh, on your relationship with God, and not even just how uh, you can improve, but more importantly, you can, you're going to look at the measure of grace that you've been given uh, more than anything, uh, and it's going to remind us that the grace that He's given us, we're grateful for, and we don't work for grace, uh, but that we we work because of grace. And so that, that's the thing, we work out of a grateful heart for what he's done, and so I feel like sound doctrine causes us to do that. Amen, amen, I like that. Yeah. I would say be Berean. Hey, like, teach. They were taught by Paul, they went to the word and was like, let me see if this dude is on point or, you know what I mean? Right. So, I think it equates, you know what I mean, if you have a math problem, three times two. How do you know three times two equals six? Well, you can use math, right? You take three, two times, and you get six, right? Or you take two, three times, and you get six. Um, so I think the same thing is with scriptures. You, you get a doctrine like talking about the goodness of God, right? Um, so let's just say the same thing. You got love, you got his justice, um, and you got his grace, right? If you take any of those apart, he's not good, right? If you take away his justice and you just have love and his grace, so he's saying he's good because he's loving and he's gracious, but what about those who are due his wrath because mm. of sin? Right. Mm. You go before a judge and you're like, yeah, I robbed that, that bank, but I just fed the homeless. <laughs> <laughs> and the judge is like, yeah, you're right, you fed the homeless. I'm gonna, you, that judge wouldn't be just, right. right? Therefore, he wouldn't be good. So I think if you take anything apart from the attributes of God that make him good, just as, that, as far as that as an example, it equates. Um, so it has to be found in the scripture. I don't think I know some people say book chapter and verse. I like that idea I think that's a start but certain things not spelled out in scripture as far as book chapter and verse But you can see the mind and the heart of God Throughout scriptures and you might be able to come to a conclusion right. based off of, uh, of something that's not necessarily in a verse You know what I'm saying? So I would say it equates based on the word of God yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nope, I agree with everything. <laughs> so we have the essentials. It has yeah. to be uh, Christ-centered. Yep. Um, the person teaching it um, should be in alignment with what the Word of God says, right? And we should be able to see it in their personal life. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Absolutely. Big fan of, you know, um, you should be able to walk with exactly your, that you're preaching. You know, and I hope that people will see that in our ministry also. Mm -hmm. So I think for now, we have everything covered. So thank you for tuning in. Um, stay tuned for uh, future ministry forums with AB for Seeds.